An Australia without rugby league is not Australia. Um, rugby league has been a fabric of our society for hundreds of years. It's people's escape, it's people's relaxation, and we need to do everything in order to continue that great uh, tradition of rugby league. It has been those Australians who have worked hard every day. They have their dreams, they have their aspirations. These are the quiet Australians who have won a great victory tonight. Good afternoon, everybody. Stephen Ferris, uh, Chris Gale and David Garnsey, our special guests today. Oh, those aspirations, those dreams have been shattered. Chris, there's nothing left for any of us anymore. I mean, when you've got Melbourne and Penrith, who I think most of Sydney except you are getting behind, there's not much to go for. Not much to get excited about, is there? Well, first of all, I have nailed my colours to the mask, Stephen and David. As you can see, I am backing the Melbourne I'm looking for security, Chris, as we speak. I'm looking for someone to take you out of that room as we speak. <laughs> it's complicated, but I'm prepared to dive into it. But, okay. but also, David, I mean, we represent the quiet Australians on this show. And um, if it was tough enough that they have to endure a Storms versus Penrith Grand Final, the schmozzle that was the Daily M's last night must have set those quiet Australians into paroxysms. What do you think? Yeah, it was, um, wasn't the smoothest of uh, broadcasts, was it? And then, of course, the revealing uh, news today about some of the things we probably didn't realise at the time had gone horribly wrong. You two watched the broadcast. I certainly did. I watched it cover to cover. Yes. I even watched. It was a vlog. No. <laughs> what was it? What exactly was it? Well, it was... It was Digital can, entertainment. Can, can I use the expression hybrid? Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so first of all, we started in um, fairly familiar territory, which is the NRL 360 studios, right. not knowing what was ahead of us. And I think in that first hour, we got the Rookie of the Year, West Tigers, Harry Grant, very, very deserving winner, I would like to say. Oh, I don't think there's any debate about that, Chris. Stephen Crichton might have had an argument, but bad luck. Um, because he did end up in the team of the year and Harry didn't because he was beaten by, have a guess who, Stephen, as hooker of the year in the Dally M's. Hooker of the year? Cameron. No. Smith. Do you mean that fellow who's dragged the actual sort of the, the, the reputation, the authenticity, the virtues of this game to the gutter and is kicking it to the curb as we speak? Hooker of the year. Hooker of the but, year. But that opens that Pandora's box again, Chris, doesn't it, that the positional awards aren't based on Dally M points? No, no, that's a, it's a feel no. thing, I think. Who does choose that? I, I can't help you. I can't help you. Yeah. Can well, you help me? L- lack of transparency. Lack of right. transparency. The dark forces. And I think they handed out um, a couple of other awards, like try the try leading try scorer, things Alex like that. Leading point scorer. Leading yeah. point scorer. Yeah. A couple of rabbits yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Like, there. There's not huge excitement about those awards. Uh, unfortunately, this year the Tigers grand final luncheon has been cancelled. And they only sent out the email yesterday, which I thought was... <laughs> <laughs> they're, going to have to, they're really going to have to turn it around <laughs> by Friday. I want to hope Dash was there, Chris. <laughs> but my good friend David Anderson uh, has uh, occasionally joined me on that, and he was always commenting that you know when the awards were given to the Tigers players, there wasn't much drama around leading point scorer, like because you know it'd be like your goal kicker. Right? Yeah, he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. "Is there really any excitement about this?" Yeah. So the Rabbits won a couple of meaningless awards, but we then went into the f- well. It was I don't what, what is a group of bubbles. Now, there's a question to test us. A group of bubbles. So Fox League talked about we're in our uh, virtual studios, okay? Yes, yes. So we had the presenter's bubble, mm. which would be um, Bonnie Sampson, Lara Pitt. Cluster. Hannah Hollis, Jess Yates. Cluster, not a good word at the right. moment, mate. I, I Cluster would say... of bubbles sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> An effervescence of bubbles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, An yeah, effervescence yeah. of bubbles. A sweeps of bubbles. <laughs> so you had the presenter bubble, yeah. then... David, I think you had the description of where the wise old men were sitting. It was, of course, the... <laughs> the cabinet. The cabinet. Yeah. And who was in the cabinet? Ben Iken, <laughs> Cooper Cronk, Mick Ennis, and the fourth one... It wasn't Braith, was it? No, it eludes me. <laughs> no, Blocker Roach. It wasn't who was, Braith, who was, was it? the fourth one? I've got no idea. <laughs> Cooper Cronk, we've seen him. It's a powerhouse of a cabinet, that's for sure. And then yeah. they had what I've dubbed the Volantis bubble. Yeah where they took five current New South Wales origin squad members, and I think I can remember these, Kiri, Tedesco, White and Gutherson and Cleary. And was this live or pre-recorded? This is live. Live, okay. Right. So they're in their own digital bubbles. And in another part of the Artam and Foxley complex. And they were 
at able to interact with the presenters yeah. in a sort of a virtual way. So if you go on our Facebook page, you'll see a picture of Vonnie speaking to Luke Keary, mm. and it looks like the scene straight out of Star Wars. Mm. You know, Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia, mm. you know, hits R two D two, and you get the image. You know, help me Obi Wan yeah, Kenobi. Yeah. And occasionally like, some test patterns behind them. Very unusual Warp zones stuff. somewhere else, some other planet. Yeah. This, surely, uh, the pandemic, if I could say, has had a, an enormous boost for technology. I mean, the amount of technicians in work at the moment actually making these things happen. But you're saying it was a failure last night, George Lucas style. Well, interestingly, I mean, uh, what do they call the thing that the AFL guys win? The Brownlow Medal. Ah, the Brownlow uh, Medal, right. And, and why is it called Brownlow? Was that a, was that a place, a person? What is it? person, Charles Brownlow. Charles Brown. Uh, How do you know that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask oh, by the way, could I also add it? Uh, Greg Alexander, of course, was the fourth member Greg Alexander. of the ah, cabinet. How do we forget? And yeah. I'm embarrassed about that because I'm a very big fan <laughs> of his work. Know, right? Everybody uh, listens to Greg Alexander, you can uh, see it on the feeds, uh, thinks that he hates every team except Penrith. <laughs> <laughs> There was a bit of an uneasy uh, moment there when they were asking about Ivan Cleary and, and they lost over that initial, shall we say, um, period. Due, due to what sort of tension? Well, what was the case? He's on the board. Ah, there was yeah. there was a dismissal of, of sorts right. of Ivan some years ago from the same club before right. he returned. There's been a lot of exploration of that in the press today about Premier Chairman Dave O'Neill said he had no idea that Gus had, Gus had told Ivan that he was tired and had to go. So, I mean, mm. how that shambles of a club has ended up in a grand final mm. is beyond me. And, and I want to that didn't that work, Chris? And I really want to come <laughs> to Ivan Cleary at length. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but the Brownlow, because they're all in different states and different, it, the whole coverage didn't hang together. Yeah. You'd have to say the Fox coverage held together. Yes. Uh, and you know uh, you were able to sort of turn in the Volandis bubble and actually receive the award. But it was the actual winning of the award where the controversy has blown up the lux. Do you want to just go through some of the minor awards before you get to the, the actual Dally M winner? Sure. Well, I'm just wondering what you think about the coach of the world. Coach of the year, Ivan Cleary. Disgraceful. Disgraceful. <laughs> Ivan the lovable. Is <laughs> Ivan that the called? terrorist. Ivan. <laughs> now, look, I think Ivan uh, setting a fine example. And isn't, he, isn't he the second father and son from Penrith to do such a thing nearly? Who were the first? The Olyanix or? The Langs. The Langs. The Langs. Yes. Mm. Now, they were authentic rugby league stock, weren't they? 2003 grand final. David, were you there? Uh, no, I was not at that grand final. I'm embarrassed to say. No, I missed that one. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah. Skinny burn, tackled by Johnny Sattler, who then went on to not not re. Sorry, Scotty Sattler, <laughs> who then went on to not recreate that for the hey, West Hey, can we talk Tigers. about Pat's new role, possibly? Well, why not? Hey, there's a new show called what's it called? Beauty and the Geek. Yeah, yeah. Now, see, Pat just corrected you. Yes. And he could do it to me all day long. Because he's auditioning as the footy geek. Yeah, the footy geek. Uh, not the music geek. It, it, it's a lock. It's incredible. I, 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 very, I, very excited here. Tw- on your screens in yeah. 2021. We're going to talk this one up big time. Well, you know, it's unusual, David, that you weren't there because I've never met anyone who goes to as much ri- live rugby league as you do of all grades and whatever. You've got a great passion for that. But you missed this particular game. Marty Lang stood yeah. out to me that he had a very successful first grade career, mm. uh, played at origin level. Never actually passed the ball once in his career. <laughs> and, and look, forgive my foggy memory, but what, about, what do I mean about Martin Lang and his head? Tape, long hair. Tape, long hair. And when he, when he, in the collision, collision, he really seemed to have the whiplash thing going. Yes, and that wouldn't be allowed now, would it? He'd be the, the not the poster boy. Oh, you're saying he's tackling he, technique? He, yes. No, 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 not tackling. It was, more, it was when he was running with the ball. Yes. He was full steam ahead with every run. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he's still allowed to do that. Yeah. I think he would have left the field a lot Many with times. concussion, right? Played much less than he not, did in the old days. Of his, yeah. <laughs> oh, the good old days. Not because of his defence, no, because no, his no, head no, no, took no, a hammer no. in. Now, yes, go on. But Marty played for the Sharks, right? He did. So yeah. the one time I got to go into first grade dressing room in the immediate aftermath was Sharks versus Storms, funnily enough. And it was 1999 when the Sharks won the minor premiership. I don't think and that you exist anymore. Fell apart, right? No, I don't think. They, I think they've wiped yeah. that one from the books. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Who won that premiership? I can't remember. And the Sharks. It was the last game they lost in the regular season before they went on a tear. Yeah, yeah. And I have to say. Marty was the guy who was getting around the boys as they were having their banana sandwiches and whatever after the game and keeping spirits up. E.T. Mm-hmm. was in the showers, mm-hmm. and I tried to get a sneaky photograph. You smell but, a fish? But I wasn't able to. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't able to. Wasn't there a court case about that at one time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what's, who was the famous, uh, you know, um, porn entrepreneur that was eventually asked to leave the, the dressing rooms? Con Ange. Con Ange, that's right. The wonderful Con Ange. Where what is Con Ange? I was going to say, where is Con Ange <laughs> in all this? was on TV show. <laughs> so, yeah, cl- clearly, the, I mean... Uh, Props to Ali Brigginshaw, the NRLW Player of the Year, based on the very yeah. brief three-game yeah. season. But 
They're unstoppable, Brisbane. Yeah. And I've watched many of their games recently. Yeah, what's your impression going into the NRLW Grand Final Roosters Broncos though? Well, both unbeaten teams, I think. Which no, are, no, no. The Broncos beat the Roosters on the weekend. Oh, apart from that, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess what I meant to say is they both beat the other two teams, and so it's it's a fitting matchup between the two best. But but you're right. I mean, uh, Broncos are um, really impregnable, and Brinkinshaw had a bit of a. Didn't you have a bit of a suspension scare there at one stage after yes. round two? But yes. seemed to have snuck through that all right. And I think that's, you know, a very popular it, a decision by for, for the crowd is going to be there. Right? They, they just seem to play a brand of football, mm. um, which is very, very effective and just a bit quicker than everyone else. Just on a social level, do you think looking at these games of women playing rugby league that's changing pe- particularly men's perception of women and different types of women how, and how, how they mentally approach a game like rugby league? Because there are very, very... Let's say large women who you know love rugby league for that very purpose. There's some very good sprinters, etc. And then there's some really, um, there are some, there's some wild cards in these in these teams, which are just incredible to watch. I mean, yeah, I'd say it's changing some men's some men's perceptions. perceptions. I mean, some of my contemporaries go, I can't watch it. It's yeah. just unseemly, and I just go, you're kidding me, right? Yeah. It's footy. It's it's, it's really good. There's footy. no difference. And. The the Brigginshaw was flanked by her squad in the Brisbane bubble that they're currently yeah. in, which is another bubble. Yeah. And, you know, clearly a team that's very much together. She gave props to Karen Murphy as her yes, inspiration. She says, that. like, message her every, uh, before every game. All this hoo-ha going up at Brisbane about what's Kevy got to do and who's he got to import and where's he got to culture. Right, it's right in front of his eyes, backyard, Chris. Yes. Just look at them. Have a look at yeah, the NRLW yeah, yeah, Broncos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The, uh, other, the other aspect, sorry about that, um, the other aspect was the introduction of the uh, Rugby Sevens women yes. to the competition this year, which seemed to be seamless as well. Yes. Fitted right in. Mm-hmm. Charlotte Caslick is yeah. the Stephen Crichton of the NRLW, in my view. She's just like the, the, the prototypical future footballer. And correct me if I'm wrong, how they, they, did they scale down the women's comp this year? Because no, of what same. Was same. Same okay. as it's been for the last couple of years. What's, yeah. the, what's the growth project, uh, sorry, uh, pr- prospects? What's, what's happening with the plans there? A bit a bit cagey about that, I think. Oh, I, don't, I don't think there's been any definite path laid down, the is there, Chris? Involved, but there's a desire to expand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there's always been a suggestion that it's a bit, bit early yet, and maybe the the yeah. talent base isn't as yeah. big as money. they would like it to be to justify oh, okay. other teams. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they yeah. want they want it to remain competitive. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think they, they think they're at that stage yet. But they're yeah. obviously very optimistic they'll get there. Oh wow, that's uh, that's Unreal. exceptional. Yeah, yeah, it's good. That just shows your rugby league gets in your bones, doesn't it? Okie dokie. Uh, back to the Daily M, David and Chris. Um, I did not watch it last night, but gee whiz, half back of the year, the lovable Nathan Cleary took it out in grand style. Chris, what do you make of that one? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm more comfortable with that. Tick, tock, tock, you know, tick, tock, like, like he's learned a lot of lessons, <laughs> yeah, Stephen. But, he has. but I thought what was really exciting, David, was that uh, they had the Chibi Frolingos headline of the year dedicated to the great late Peter Fralingo. It's the award we always look forward to, isn't it? Pretty much. Yeah. And and there were some great moments uh, or things reflected upon, but uh, Fire Up actually won. We won. Yeah. What was the headline, Chris? The Resumption Day, <laughs> May 28. We and were on that one, weren't we? Now, now, officially it was branded Project Apollo on the coverage, but oh, we know yeah. that it was our... Um, concerted efforts and our faith and belief in the NRL and Peter Volandis that we get there. It was so powerful it became a T-shirt. It did. Incredible work. You can see it if you're watching on YouTube Incredible. right now. Incredible We'll take credit for that one. But because the big one was uh, mired in controversy, David, you might be able to talk us through the, the details and I can give you the official response. And before <laughs> you start there, I know that in some of these things they have a count up or a count down. What was the excitement level? Was there a drum roll? What was the moment when you realised what the, what, who the winner was and then the controversy started straight away? Well, you didn't know who the winner was until, of course, the very last second. That's this, it. This is how these things work. They get an envelope? No, no, there's no envelope. No envelope? No, 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 no. This is just an announcement of how many points like the, boxing the players in bikinis earn no, okay. <laughs> in a particular match in the final round. Okay. So we're down to um, round 20. Yes. And we've got Nathan Cleary on 24. Yes. We've got Clint Gutherson on 25. Yes. And Jackie Boy White and Dennis Carnahan, who's we shouldn't say Dennis is not here because he's. Um, oh mate, let, you... let, let's just say he's. It's been a tough year for all of us, yeah, right? I, I don't really. I, the word facility seems a little bit harsh. A facility, a healthcare facility. He's getting the best of care and attention. Chris, can I just say, um, pandemic, right? <laughs> yes. uh, lockdown, bushfires, bushfires, <laughs> floods. Um, yeah, at least he's been working. Yes. He, his hand's been held by the ABC, but gee whiz, it's tough when your team camera goes out like that, isn't it? And he is doing rugby league, the musical. Smashed. Paddy and RSL tomorrow yes, night, yes. but that's another story. And so Jackie Boy Whiten on 26, and then Overlord Volandis is in the bubble because it is the Volandis bubble, and he reads the just the points for the last three players, David. And Correct. Take us through what happened with those those readings. Oh, you're asking me to recall this with uh, with great definition. Mm-hmm. But 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 the, the bottom line is everyone was 
um, expecting that, of course, Jack Whiten would miss out. And, and at that point, there was a lot of sympathy for Jack Whiten because Jack Whiten was leaving the competition ah. but was removed from the team by Coach Ricky. Yes, yeah, uh, As he was with a number of other players. Nine players didn't play yeah. that last round, so Whiten gets zero. In to relax of scoring points. To give them energy time. Yeah, yes. give, give them a chance to Stroll recuperate, off. to yeah. be flogged by the storm last weekend at so Suncourt Stadium. it's Ricky's fault again. It's totally Ricky's yeah. fault. So, White, so Whiten's done. He's cooked because clearly... Had you know been brilliant against the Bulldogs yeah. out at ANZ yeah. Stadium, and then I saw King Guffo carve up the Tigers what at Bank get? West Stadium. Well, first they announced Nathan and Peter Volandi says donut, donut, right? Wow, yeah. he's gone. The preemptive yeah. favourite gone, yeah. just like that, right? But but everyone, you can see Guffo's, and he's sort of yeah. like yeah. Sort of, you know, getting, getting ready, ready, getting ready yeah, for yeah, warming yeah, up the voice, yeah, champagne. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. They gave Nathan and, and the dance. <laughs> We're going to get a bit of that. The, the pyramid <laughs> dance. Yeah. The pyramid. So, and listen, I'm a Tigers fan. He got back to class, I believe. I'm a Tigers fan. <laughs> Luke Brooks got a point. Yeah. And we said, uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Junior Paul, who, who, who I did have a very good game, and I'm a big fan of Junior Paul. Oh, Paulo, aren't we all? Aren't got we all? the two points. Right. And then you go, well, here it is the ascension of the King Gutho to the throne. Dalian winner. Come on down, 2020. Nathan Brown got three points. Got, they got nothing, and White and wins. Wow. Anyway. It, that would be a romantic story. It's controversy in and of itself because yeah. one would argue that Gutherson should have probably got the three from yeah, that yeah. game. Now, let me ask you this. What are the two teams of the grand final? Storms David, and, Chris? Storms and Panthers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, were there any representatives of the Storm at this Dallium night? Uh, in his own bubble up yeah. at Sunshine Coast, uh, Cameron Smith so he didn't have to travel. Uh, was interviewed extensively. Yeah, right. Quite a long interview with Cameron. Quite a long yeah. interview. So yeah. we're taking up how much of his time, do you say? Half an hour? Ten minutes. Yeah. Ten minutes. So if that. Yeah. Nathan Cleary? So the biosecurity rules yep. said that Nathan Cleary couldn't be there, but uh, the National Cabinet met. You've got your Palaszczuk, your Andrews, your Berry Chicklin, your Morrison. Mm -hmm. Volandis, of course, has rung up, come over the top. Yeah. And Nathan and Ivan have been released from yeah. their bubble yeah. to join the Volandis bubble and the Fox bubble in order for Nathan to be there for the wonderful moment. So is it some sort of, you know, as you said, a bubble? I mean, how does he enter the bubble? Well, is there some process? Is there a team of hazmat-wearing men, women, yeah, so these, spraying These, these are details we just... You know, we don't know. We don't know. It's but, a, keep yeah. away from us. Yeah, but you know when you're driving down the expressway and you yeah. see those trucks with the swirling yellow lights and there's a convoy? Yes, yes. Right. Well, So basically Nathan and Ivan were in a secure vault yeah. in that main truck yeah. and they're scooped up at Penrith Stadium and then they're deposited through a vacuum sealed entry, sort of like a yeah. airlock 2001 yeah, yeah. style at the Artama Studios. Does time change? Space time continuum? Is that affected? It's a, bit like, a bit like that new movie Tenet. Yeah, yes, it right. actually goes backwards. But, the, okay. but, but then there were three players who presumably had left their own club bubbles. But, so how does that work? But no, right. I think those are players that are now officially in the origin bubble. Oh. So they're in the Blues bubble. Yeah. Right. That's why they could all be together. Oh, the Kiris and the Tedescos, even of though course. they have no chance of winning. If, <laughs> imagine if you're flying over these bubbles, what, what the world would look like right <laughs> it's now. It's so complicated. Very complicated. A Venn diagram yeah. won't give it no. any justice. No, no, right? no, no. And, and, and anyway, so, so Penrith is up on arms because the Clearies have had their uh, beautiful routine, which includes yeah. basketball and dance music apparently, is that right? has been disrupted for yeah. no good reason. Right. But you would think, well, that's okay. Yeah. Now, here's, here's the kicker. If you're on the Daily Telegraph website, which I am religiously every day yes. on The Astonisher, uh, Buzz Rothfield wrote an article crit critical of Gutherson not winning because of the, them ignoring his performance oh, in the hang last on, what round. time was this? It was published before the awards began. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let, let me just imagine there's a Daily Telegraph. Um, he's the editor at large, so he can go wherever he wants. Correct. He's got control over the whole enterprise. Total authority. Total authority. There's no Murdoch looking over his shoulder anymore. That's it. And he just stands there and he's got to go, what, what time is it supposed to go? 7.50, 8.50, something? Well, they get apparently they go, were given access to the results at 3 p.m. Yeah. so that yeah. they can do their special But there's the feature. big red button, right? And the award started technically at 6.30. Okay. So I think it was published prior to that. Okay. Oh, yeah, the publishing. Mm. But there's a big red button to make it go to publishing, sure. Print. Yeah, yeah, print. Yeah, I mean, sorry, you yeah, you lift the plastic lid and you go, clank. Yeah. And the whole thing starts moving and whirring. Yeah. And somehow Buzz, buzz did, what, did he trip? <laughs> was it a, was it an elbow? I mean, I did I did an elbow mix the other day, the other night at the, at the you know I had my fade up and, and just bumped the button with my elbow. It can happen, it Chris. It can happen. Human yeah. error. Can I say, Stephen? No one noticed. No one noticed. The ground. I but everybody noticed this one, didn't they? Well, there's been the official comment from Buzz <laughs> yeah. owing to a production error that was out of my control. What control? He's the editor at large. He can do everything. <laughs> the Daily Telegraph website accidentally published the winner of the Daily M Award before the official announcement tonight. We apologise sincerely for the mistake. Yeah, he's getting on in age, though. Isn't it's he, the human side of Buzz. It's the human side. And, of Buzz. And, and, <laughs> but no one person has taken responsibility, Chris. Is what you're saying? No, 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 no. 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 And I mean, has anybody owned it? 
Put no, their hand no, up. No one's, None of that. Okay. No one's owned it. No, no, no. And I think even Jack Whiten was a loser on the day. Oh, How yeah. do we put that? And Nathan Cleary lost, lost the whole night. Yes. So there goes their premiership. Possibly. Bam. Like that. Possibly. Is Cameron Smith behind this? <laughs> Did he press the button? Did he sneak in somehow? <laughs> All well, we're revealed. Uh, all right, we might come back in just a moment and resume here uh, with uh, Fire Up, The Quiet Australia, in just a moment. I've been covering football for four decades and I did not understand it. Chris Gale, you feeling better? Or are you still feeling angry? You're I'm wearing feel- purple, that's I'm not a pretty colour. I'm feeling very unusual in my purple tops. Though. Papal colours, yeah, hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Royal colours. Uh, Stephen Ferris and our guest today, David Garnsey, um, Chief Executive, once upon a time, of the Rugby League Players Association, Chief Executive. So you would have... Do you get to know the players while you're in that uh, that role? Oh, very much so. Very it was so. it was essentially a trade union for it's the players. It's a sharing, caring sort of role? Very much Their so. Their welfare is that... Uh, yeah. Your... We were a very small organisation, though, when I started. Okay. There were, I was one of two employees. And where were you based then? That was out at Sydney Olympic Park. Ah, okay. Um, so... Yeah. Chief Executive seems like a pretty uh, lofty title for a two-person <laughs> organisation, doesn't it? But you made it grow. Who, who set that up? Originally, yeah. This is a bit lost in time. There are stories about Arthur Beetson, and uh, in, in 1979, when it was, I think, called the the Association of Rugby League Professionals, they right. called them those days. And how? What, what's the primary in the arc of your Jack time? Jack Gibson as well, by the way. Jack yeah. Gibson as well. Yeah. The fur coat is it there? Oh, maybe <laughs> maybe, knows. maybe it is. <laughs> have you heard that story? Yes, I have. Yeah, Harvey maybe. Howard. Yeah. yeah, the relocation and the, the, the he got his car back, but <laughs> no Gibson's jacket. Coat no was coat. in the car. I don't know. It, I, I can imagine sort of some um, drug dealer in Luton yes, getting, yes. getting around uh, in the Gibson Coat. It's a bit tattered weather now. Yeah, you know, come yeah. have a look at this. <laughs> See what I'm offering. Down the ghetto. Yeah. Uh, yeah what, 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 what were your objectives then uh, and did you achieve them and what do you think were your, beyond that, what were your greatest achievements? All right. Well, there was a multifaceted role really mm. um, and a lot of it wasn't particularly visible to the public. For example, we had a large role in uh, player merchandise, um, oh. signed stuff. Yes, um, yes. Trading cards, my personal favourite. Yes. yes. Um, but even things like little badges and buttons, yes. and these are all um, things from which players could earn royalties, and that was our responsibility to can I, can um, I interrupt negotiate. For a, can I interrupt off, for a yeah. moment here? Yeah. How long have we been friends? Like 35 years at least, right? It's probably about that long, yeah. Did yeah. I see one T-shirt, cap? Set of cards? Nothing. Bubble gum Absolutely in them? Absolutely nothing. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> All that merch, where did it go? <laughs> hey? you Black go, market. You go to the Gansey household, you go down to the basement, it's just a, it's a treasure trove. He knows the value's rising, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of, lot of talk in high circles at the moment about corruption. Uh, yeah. not, <laughs> nothing of that in the Rugby League Players Association. Allocation so of funds, etc. Yeah. No, so well, that's interesting. So um, I, I imagine, in the, well, I've always imagined that the, the ownership, the NRL, for example, right now, or whoever would have owned the rights to all of that merchandise, but not so. They, well, the not, players can strike deals. Not, not the signed or well, merchandise. Or, uh, the, or the merchandise which relies on what you might call the player's image. So right? when I go to the yeah. news agent, I see all those little sealed packages in glossy colour. You know, that's that's a product of the NRL, owned by the NRL, and the players don't get a cut? They, well, they get they get a royalty. A royalty? Yeah. Wow. For well, how long? they did in my day anyway. And it's, for life? It's some time ago. Well, there's a, there's a set fee for each yeah. set of cards. Okay, all right. Yeah. But once, uh, they, once they trade it on, you don't. No, anyway, let's not focus too much on the merchandise. <laughs> um, the, uh, <laughs> the, the other thing, of course, there are extensive, there are extensive education and welfare programs, and there right. was a partnership with the NRL and the RPA yeah. about those, and, yeah. and that involved me sitting on a committee and, and making some all sorts of policy decisions. And there's, a, there's quite a large team of education and welfare yes. people at the NRL responsible for that. And that was that was a great, I suppose, the first real cooperation between the Players Association and the NRL that those two bodies could run that together yes. for the yes. benefit of the players. Yes. There was also um, what we called a, a, a player agent accreditation committee yep. on which I also sat, and that, that was a committee consisting of NRL representatives. That has been probably a very controversial area, yeah. hasn't it? It has. How so high a standard did you have? <laughs> <laughs> but so that would, that would involve you know, uh, yeah. actually accrediting the agents yeah. in the first place and then dealing with any disputes that players yes. might have with their agents, and, yeah. and that took a considerable amount of time as well. But again, that, I say most of that was out of the the visibility and gaze yeah. of the public because yeah. the media love to focus on yeah. the financial side of it. Joseph Swali as well, for yeah. example, you know. So, yeah. so uh, the welfare of the younger player before they get to um, the right age to be dealt with and also those players that are retired and particularly elderly and or injured and or uh, out of income, the, are they areas that you play in? That was a vexed issue at the time mm-hmm. um, because uh, essentially we were looking after, when I first got there, looking after our old players. Yeah. Um, and those coming through the ranks weren't necessarily yeah. within the fold, although gradually we brought them in. Right. Similarly, 
the players at the end of their careers possibly weren't as well looked after as they should have been. So the men of league thing, that's not in cahoots with you at all? Well, it was by the time right. I was leaving that Great. the men of league and the NRL formed yeah. a, a partnership as well and they agreed to look more after those players in the twilight of their careers and also going on yeah. um, into their transition out of the game, yeah. if you like. Yeah, yeah. But it's still, it's probably still an area that you can never do enough work in, but yeah. it's in far better shape now than it was. Yeah. How did you get the job? <clears throat> It was an ad in the paper, Chris, as simple as that. Seriously? Old yeah, school? Yeah. yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it was in a Saturday paper. It might have been the... And is this the, the New the, South Wales Rugby League? And no. then? No, no, no. It's the, no, the association no. itself, yeah. It's, and it's a separate association? It's a separate association. Mm. Great times. And, and then, there's some famous people who were involved before yeah, I was. Yeah, Tony Butterfield was probably the person ah, who gave yes, it a yes. lot of exposure okay, in yeah. the early part of the century, yeah. and then mm. um, Matt Rowell took over from him. Mm. Were you about yeah. 2010 to... 2016, where's it? Nine, nine to 15, Chris. Nine, nine to 15. Nine. Yeah. Mm. And, and one of the um, images that's indelibly marked in my mind was that you were in the job when the storm salary cap scandal hit, right? About six months after I got there. Yeah. Right. So that was, oh. what was that experience like? Uh, very difficult um, for a number of reasons because uh, as a two person organisation, uh, we had very few resources, both mm. financial and um, human. Yeah. Um, there in Melbourne, which created an additional difficulty because we were yeah. based in Sydney, and so um, getting involved with them as much as we would like to was mm. difficult for just practical reasons. Uh, and then, of course, we're dealing with a club which, at the time, was run by News Limited largely, and so that was very not, complicated. Not, not your typical situation. No, no. It probably couldn't have been a worse club for us to have involved in that scenario yeah. um, because of these. Strange things that were going on. Did you get on. to see both books? <laughs> no. <laughs> or the cupboard that they were kept in? <laughs> what, 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 what garages were you taking to and what <laughs> cruises and speedboats were there were any there? skeletons in there as well? <laughs> and, and, of course, your perspective would be player-centric, right? Absolutely. About their welfare. You, you, and how that affected Separate yeah. from the club, coaches, mm. those sorts of things. And uh, I have to remember there was there was a one of the you know press television reports on it and there was one of those great establishing shots with David walking across outside Olympic Park holding a lot of files. Right, right. You know, and not, not, the, not the trolley. And, 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 and I always wonder, you know, why do they do that? And then once I had to do some interview and they, you know, they want you Just looking go back at a there document. And, yeah, yeah. and that, that was actually Prince's Park. That was that was in the oh. days when Melbourne were training at Prince's Park. Oh, right, Carlton's old digs. Yeah, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And um, any particular highlights that, that you recall of that particular time? Of, of that particular time? No, no, time? Of, the, of the six years. Well... Ostensibly, I was brought in to negotiate what we call the collective bargaining agreement, which yeah. is the, the enterprise agreement between the players and the NRL and the clubs. Yes. Really between the, the players and the clubs, but the NRL would take responsibility for a lot of it. How long did uh, that take? It took a long time. We, yeah. we originally thought we'd be doing that in 2010, but it, it, we, we didn't start it till 2012 because we wanted to align it with the new television broadcast deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it was a particularly torturous yeah. negotiation. It was very hard to get agreement on anything for yeah, a long yeah. time. And so we started, I think, in about June. So we were still going in December. In, in, mm. in simple terms, I'm just trying to get my head around. I haven't even thought about this, yeah. but is there is there a chunk of money that comes as a, as a percentage of earnings of television broadcasting, et cetera, rights? A chunk of money? Yeah, the, a percentage... A percentage Slice for players. Well, that wasn't then. That was something we were angling towards because yeah. they're, they're, they're so the rugby union player players bigger, had more, you know. had succeeded in negotiating a percentage share. Yeah, that was yeah. not something the NRL was interested in. Right. It was more a case of negotiating a number. Yeah, and then they can make more profit on top of that. And 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 and, and there was a, there was a concern that if we negotiated thirty percent, then if things went bad, the players yeah. would get less. Or alternatively, if things yeah. went very well, which yeah. is what would be suspected, what do you, they would get more. Right. Yeah. But so so what the, were you pushing for? Thirty. Yeah. No, but you're pushing for the, the percentage. We were then, yeah. And, yeah. And, and I think they've been more successful in the recent negotiations about that. And were there any players that you particularly dealt with who were really interested in that area, representing players? There are a number, yeah. and, and from all different clubs. Were they? Uh, and, and, and this is an important thing about the negotiations because I could go in with my legal training and my mm -hmm. uh, hard work and homework mm -hmm. um, going into those, but nothing was more effective than having players out there articulating their right. position and their concerns. and To other players? To, to the NRL. To the NRL itself, yeah. Yeah, yeah fronting up and saying we... And that's mm -hmm. that's where those negotiations really took off, yeah. was when they took centre stage yeah. and said... Yeah. Can you remember any names? This is what we need. Well, Cameron Smith was involved, right? Michael yeah. Crocker was involved. I'll give him right? that. <laughs> Give him that. Tick. <laughs> Tick. Yeah. Jared, Jared, Hain, Jared Hain was involved. But, but the Hain. most important person at that stage was Clint Newton, who yeah. who had been with Melbourne Storm, of course, when they won a premiership, you might mm -hmm. recall, and then um, went to overseas and was playing in England. Yeah. He then came back 
and was playing um, with Penrith at the time yep. and had been involved in the Players Association when he'd formerly been um, in Sydney. Right. Um, not only a fantastic advocate in his own right, but a man who was able to rally yeah, the yeah, troops yeah, behind yeah, him yeah. and bring those into the negotiations in a very I mean, effective way. Did, did you have any rugby league background? Essentially, no, apart no, from my no. love of the game and no. my constant and, spectating. And, and is that a good or a bad thing into this situation, to this pool? That you've uh, I don't know that it was good or bad because no. I, I wasn't employed to they play see, rugby league. No, no, they <laughs> see you as an expert in your field, right. so that's that. Yeah. Yeah. So it begs the key question in all this, yeah. doesn't it? I mean, who's your team? I don't have a team, Chris, and I think you know you the You can say that now. Now that you're not on the job, you can tell us, <laughs> it's, it's, David. It's, it's a safe <laughs> space. <laughs> there's there's a long and twisted story behind why I don't have a team, and we don't have time today, Chris. And I don't want to abbreviate that in any but way. Before he but goes I, in there, th- yeah. this this varies. Like we all have a team, we grow up with a team, we're blooded to the team, and then you get people like Vossi who have got two or three teams, and then we'll flip and say I've got no teams. We all know he's a South supporter, right? Right, right. Uh, and there are some that do have their second favourite team. You know, I would say the West Tigers because my dad was a Magpie supporter. Second Thanks, favourite sir. team. You hate the Dragons. I don't care. That's right. right. But no team. No team. So you can watch rugby league and just enjoy it for itself. Every team I love watching, yeah. Incredible. The only, thing I want to, <laughs> the only thing I want to say about this is that David and I were at Brookvale Oval in 1990 when Balmain Tigers were playing Manly Ring of Seagulls. And that game is indelibly etched in everyone's memory yeah. because it's when Eddie Ward put Blocker in the sim bin and Blocker patted Eddie on the head. Oh, I remember right? that, yeah. Now, Manly went on to win the game. Yeah. And I think the, the clinching try, I was crestfallen. And Dave was actually on the Brookie Hill, actually behind the goalpost from memory, and he was windmilling a la Pete Townsend with excitement <laughs> uh, at Manly scoring, but apparently has no club. Hmm. It's, it's actually a misinterpretation of what took place. So okay. I wasn't windmilling in excitement <laughs> of Manly scoring. I was windmilling in excitement of Chris's team being beaten. Right? Ah, <laughs> is, 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 it, is, it, is it? I put it to you, Mr. Garnsey. Is it true or not true that you were actually on an international telephone call during the 87 grand final, Manly versus Canberra, requesting score updates? Is that true or untrue? It was after the game. Oh. But, that, but that was just for historical interest, Chris. Historical interest. You're doing backflips then, too, yeah. Chris. And, and, and what have you been up to lately, David? <laughs> Depends how recent you want to make it, Chris. Uh, <laughs> I've actually just um, finished up a year at Tennis New South Wales, right. um, where I was in charge of their um, integrity, governance and risk area, yeah. and, and also the company secretary. That, that's uh, got to be riddled with corruption, Tennis, <laughs> is it? <laughs> he found nothing. Right. Anyway, terrific, terrific organisation and, uh, and good people there, and uh, I wish them well. But, right. uh, <laughs> well, well. Okay, Quiet Australia, well, far up. Before we go. Oh, you got something to say, Chris? We're right at the pointy end of the season, Stephen, yes. and we're at the pointy end of our Doughboy Pizza competition. Oh, okay. So we've been running this for a few weeks now, David, where if you enter or we'll go on the website doughboy.com.au and you enter the promotional code Fire Up, you get 20% off your order. Like, it's already, you're way in front. But by registering your email, and the good people at Doughboy will give us the list, we are going to contact one lucky listener mm-hmm. this weekend to ask them to come and join us here yep. in the Batuta Advocate Studios yeah. to do our grand final wrap episode. And we're going to get in a bit of the Doughboy product to enjoy. And We're going to wallow in pizza, are we? We are going to wallow, fest, in, we, yeah, wallow yeah. in pizza. And, and the, I think the competition is lagging badly behind what Doughboy are doing. Uh, nowhere near it. Nowhere yeah. near well, it. Well, <laughs> and you use the word wallow, which I think is terrible. Well, well, because one thing you don't do is be weighed down by <laughs> no. Doughboy pizza. You, they no, are, exactly, they're no. essentially not I mean, light I mean, and delicate and tasty pizzas. Yes, it's like, yeah. it's like yeah. Richie Rich in the pool yeah. of money, yeah. you know. <laughs> and uh, a couple of the Batuta boys will be around, so you get to say hello. Yeah. And uh, the testimonials just keep coming in. So I've got one just before we go to the break. Jade from Covelli had this to say. Had the Raiders eaten Doughboy's spiced pumpkin <laughs> pizza that we had on Friday night, they might well be in the grand final. Yeah, they, weren't they lacking firepower? Yeah. The kids also love the Gilligan's Island pizza which Jay thought possibly should be renamed Sticky's Island, a pizza <laughs> tale about a fateful trip up north. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jade loves the order early, deliver later concept, which is just absolutely brilliant. You say, I've got a bunch of people coming over to watch the grand final at 7.30, yeah. place the order at 1 o'clock that day and it will arrive. And yeah. as Jade says, they will knock on the door. It makes a more rational decision-making process. This is obviously pretty serious in her house. Mm. Without the pressures of ravenous kids breathing down your neck. <laughs> They delivered bang on time when we asked. We were able to get the kids in bed and asleep so they didn't have to yeah. witness As the trauma. As you Swiss German timekeeping. That's right. Oh. <laughs> witness the trauma that was the Raiders massacre. Oh, man, the trauma. Gee whiz. Can we talk about Cameron Smith after this break? Let's please do that. <laughs> please. <laughs> and the pox on the game that is Melbourne. Back in a minute with Fire Up. Cameron Smith. Cameron Smith. Everyone's saying, oh, he's an immortal, or he keeps playing, or what can't he do? i tell you what he can't do. Yeah. Anything good for rugby league. <laughs> he has... Hey, 
I was just about to say that. <laughs> Brendan Cowell. Brendan Cowell. Avatar himself. I mean, he's deep in CGI, isn't he? He, I was surprised he actually wasn't in the Dalliums last night as one of the yes, virtual yes, yes, avatars yes. accepting, you know, yeah. the award of the Sharks Community Award or something like that. Now, Chris and David, you know my uh, distaste for the Storm go back to '99 yes. uh, when we lost to the Dragons, lost them. That's that's obvious. But more than anything, the next layer was that how dare a team come in on the second year and win a competition in rugby league? It should take at least twenty years. Seriously, I don't. I just don't buy how they how they did that. And then there was Glenn Lazarus doing the cartwheel. That was the, that was the salt in the wound. That was the lemon and the salt in the wound. <laughs> that was it for me. Um, I take this person. This is not a representative of anybody else. Just rugby league individual fan, you know. But since Cameron Smith has come in, we all know about the tackling methods and the the ruck process, the slowing down of the game. But I think it's you can just sort of sense in your gut, in your waters, that there's an instinct at play there that says let's not be expansive, let's not be, uh, let's not play a fair game, which I saw in many teams over the finals. Let's try and shut the teams down. Now that was the old storm. Now they've got this new attacking thing. Good luck to them. Very clever. Bellamy, greatest coach ever, I think. Blah, blah, blah. Wow. But at the heart of it all, Cameron Smith hasn't changed his colours at all. He will do whatever it takes. Malcolm X once said that. Cameron Smith does it every single week, whatever it takes. Are you saying that's his mantra by any that's means? That's his mantra. By, by any means, means necessary. necessary. Yes, sir. David, yes. comment? I'm not going to go there at all. <laughs> I, I'd rather talk about... Hey, you're out of the job, Blake. You're, you're five years clear, mate. I mean... <laughs> I don't, I don't pretend to get inside Cameron Smith's head, but I, I am interested in the way that the, the Melbourne Storm, as you say, have changed uh, yes. their method of play. Yes. And that I think that is impressive. It was a slowing uh, process, a controlling process. And now it's all about speed. And he knows uh, how to kick for touch and all that sort of stuff. He knows how to monitor the game. And why has he lasted 37 years? Because he doesn't get tackled. He doesn't actually do any work except come in as the third or the fourth person to slow Still, the ruck down. Unlike most rugby league players, he doesn't. He understands that self-preservation is a good way to go. A good way to go. <laughs> right, He's too to smart Lang, to be right? rugby league. And there's something about it. I just think, did he grow up with rugby league? I mean, I'm sure he did, but it just doesn't feel like it. No, no. I think Smith appeared fully formed out of the Storms' <laughs> lab at the age of 18. <laughs> you know, he just suddenly appeared. I think he played Canterbury down yeah. Olympic Park. And you go, the guy's got no junior record. Yeah. They've mocked up some yeah. photos that suggested yeah. he played with the likes of Inglis and Cronkers. <laughs> it's not yeah. true. But... And, you don't care. I don't care whether he plays on or doesn't play on. But this whole this whole sort of um, pantomime nonsense that's going on at the moment. Well, well, well let, let's look into that a little bit. So before the subbed off early, wave to the Suncorp crowd, yeah. and then the chairing off and the yeah. Gatorade and yet the, another the, testimonial farewell type yeah. scenario. I, I have to tell you, the way he was being drenched there just brought up images of uh, Todd Carney in the bubbler. But yes. <laughs> but. but it, Near the end of the game, Nick Kotrick is is going to score. For all money, yep. he's entitled to score, yep. and Lucifer himself mm. brings him down in a tackle. <laughs> Fossey's described it. It's not just the play of Super the game. Human? It's the play of his career, oh, right? right? okay. Go closely and look at the video. Mm. Unbelievable effort. Tremendous. Mm. 37 years old. How does he do it? You know, Canterbury must be wondering, what have mm. we spent money on this Kotrick kid? But... <laughs> He executes the tackle and then he just goes on with a little, little forearm yeah, yeah. shiv into the head. That is Cameron Smith <laughs> and, to a T. Yeah, and do I recall him questioning the rest decision and laughing mockingly, sort of, oh, my God, you're kidding me, aren't you? Don't know, like, yeah. Did you see that? Well, we, we, the Smith cackle, yeah, again, cackle. The, the, the cackle was in evidence with, you know, he's humiliating Belly out of his mouth too, Chris? When, when <laughs> Belly <laughs> changing the tyre on the golf cart yeah, up in the Sunshine yeah, Coast yeah. bubble. What's that uh, smell? Oh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> but, but anyway, to sum it all up... Mm. The presser, 17 minutes of right. bellyache and Smith. And basically, this is the presser. They walk in. Smith is chomping on an ice block. Yeah. right? And Instead of chomping on the inside of his mouth, which he does most of the time. What, what was your conclusion, David, after the wave goodbye and the chairing off as far as what Cameron's plans were to retire? What was your conclusion? Very little doubt that he'll be retiring, Chris. Right. Yeah. So the first question is, well, Cameron, it looks like you're retiring. He goes, well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so but why? Why do that? What's he buying? Well, well hey, he's an evil genius. An evil <laughs> genius. And, and it's like they're not talking about Cameron Munster's brain fart it's, it's, two years ago. You know they always say Bennett's a genius because he takes the emphasis off yeah, the players. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, Smith's learned from the greats yeah. and he just takes the all yeah. the emphasis off, you know, like, I don't know. But he's very large shoulders. Is Munster going to blow up again? Yeah, you know, of course uh, he is. W- Ryan Pappenhausen, is, yeah. is, is, is that haircut not going to last one more game? No one's asking any of those is questions. Is there a shit stir in Penrith? Because if there was. Yeah, Louis. Yeah. You go straight for Munster over and over again. 
He is known as the Niggle Merchant. I, there I've not, you go. I've not heard any of his work, though. Yeah, are you, you familiar, <laughs> yeah, are you oh, familiar yeah, with his yeah. work? Yeah, he was extensively interviewed uh, during the week <laughs> about what's this. And Jimmy Smith sat in this very seat last week and said he's going to be the most unpopular person in rugby league going forward for both his on-field performance and his off-field performance. Oh, right? Really? right. <laughs> and so Lou I was asked about this mm. and he said, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a, I am, a, I am a, I'm not a sledger, a niggle merchant, but I just say stuff like ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? And Nathan Cleary says we love the bloke, we yeah, love how he does yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So Luai goes up to other players yeah, on the field and yeah. goes ha ha. So he'll be going Munster. He'll be Munstering. Dying. So if he goes a ha ha brain fart, right? Well, well, Munster's actually talked about this because you're referring to the fact that he was simbed in twice in the 2018 GFS of the yeah. Roosters. Yeah, that's right. And, and one for just kicking a bloke on the ground on the head. And can you believe, David? And well, you, you, I presume you were at that game. I was certainly at that right. game. Yeah. Do you remember <laughs> the second time Munster was put in the bin, what the on-field, the on-ground DJ played? Yeah, I do. Yeah, hit, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hit the it road was jack. cruel yeah. and yeah. cold and heartless. Yeah. Really, really tasteless. I think it's pretty, pretty to the point, hit the road jack, except Cameron would be better <laughs> if I had such a song. Maybe I should have done a, a, an edit job. Hit the road, Cameron. You know, Ray Charles, come on back. You well, know, he's, well, he's, yeah. <laughs> that would be more pertinent. And, and and hit the road, Cameron applies not just to Munster. And you know what? I think that it, it, there was a sense that that we're all in this together, even before COVID, right? Everybody was singing along. They loved it. They enjoyed it. <laughs> Could you, when Smith is introduced before the game, play "Hit the Road, Cameron"? Then I'd be nice with it. Yeah. But I'd I believe I'd be hooked. I think I believe that every week at training, and they walk in, and there's a series of motivational uh, images on the wall now up at Sunshine Coast, and one of them mm. is of you hitting Me. play on "Hit the Road, Jack." <laughs> uh, so, so that, that's the, that's part of the problem, isn't yeah. it? That we've got to. Um, deal with the Cameron Smith yeah. legacy. And how is he going to handle Penrith? What's his, what's his methods, do you think? What's he going to do? Who does he have to stop? Well, I think Nathan Cleary comes to mind because yeah. he seems to be the yeah. the linchpin and all this. But I think it's and the pace of the game. Want, okay, so how will Ivan the Lover will change the pace of Penrith then? Well, I think it's a, it's a matter of who establishes the pace at which they want to play. Uh, and to me... The Penrith pace is up the guts. Up the guts. Absolutely. And the Melbourne pace is out Can wide. Can I say leg speed? Right. And Penrith, Penrith will want James Fisher-Harris to be man of the match. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh. And he'd be some shot for that. He would be One of the props wow. of the year. Yeah. 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 And, and you could see sputters of it last Saturday out yeah. there at ANZ. Yeah. Just moments where Penrith, but they just weren't quite. I think the best clicking. is yet to come, Chris. Yeah. What about what about the Josh Mensor one pump too many for the forward pass? <laughs> yeah. it, it just wasn't all gelling. Yeah. So they need that to gel. Personally, I want to see the huge strike power in the back three of the Melbourne Storms, as in Vunavalo and ex Tigers Pappenhausen and Addo Carr, mm-hmm. give it to Ivan the Terrace because, you know, I've had enough. I don't understand it. You're a Sydney boy? You don't understand it, right? I don't understand that you could place your distaste for Ivan Cleary, the lovable, just because he left your team high and dry. What about James Tedesco? You love him. I do love James Tedesco. Yeah, and what's I, the difference? And I understood the decision because James didn't lie to me, Stephen. <laughs> right? It now, says here, can I quote, that Ivan is so direct and doesn't lie. He said, if he was pissing on you, he wouldn't say it was raining. Right. Hey, that's a, that's a straight up sort of bloke, is it? <laughs> which, I, I, I want to give my assessment of Ivan, David, but what's your assessment of the man, his achievements, uh, the fact that he's, uh, he's, he's sort of returned to his son to be the prodigal son in a way, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, I, Ivan's... A most significant feature, I think, is he's never overly excited and he's never overly sad. Yeah. He's this even-tempered person, which I think didn't resonate well with the Warriors fans when he was there because they're very passionate people, the New Zealanders, mm-hmm. um, and he never looked sad enough for them when they lost and alternatively he never looked happy enough for them when they won. And that Same was, for the West Tigers? That was ultimately his demise at the Warriors, I understand. Mm-hmm. Nothing to do with actually his coaching ability. Right. It was his moods. So when know? the kitty turned around at Bankwest Stadium on the back of the Penrith victory over the Tigers and just sort of goes, oh, oh there's Ivan, and go. the father <laughs> blows up... And Ivan does the, the, the cry and the yeah. blowing kisses. That's yeah. almost out of character, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. Do you know yeah, why yeah. this has happened? No, tell us, Chris. Hayden Knowles, and you'd be across Hayden Knowles and his mindfulness work. He's, yes. he's working out at, at the uh, Gus Gould Academy. Yeah. <laughs> they have what they call vulnerability sessions. Yes. And the to players. To find the vulnerability moments and erase them? So it's pretty heartwarming stuff. The players, uh, you know, on a schedule get up and say, look, this is where I came from. There's a, a lot of narrative in Penrith about. A lot of local boys yeah, yeah, yeah. motivated by the mischaracterization of Mount Druid in the Struggle Street documentary, yeah. tragedy in the family. Yeah. So Ivan, of course, it gets his turn to get up and be vulnerable, mm-hmm. right? Sure, he gave his brother a kidney. <laughs> right. Sure, come on. Right. Yeah. But what else has he done? Right. Yeah. <laughs> but why isn't he up there saying, 
This is what I did. I went into an organisation. I took their coin. I galvanised a process that got rid of the likes of the greatest player in the world, James Tedesco, plus <laughs> Moses, plus Aaron Woods. I created a marketing campaign about... Come, you're either on the bus or you're off the bus. Yeah. I got the Blue Wiggle to write a song about it. <laughs> I created a belief in an organisation. Did he put Vinge on the wall? And he, <laughs> and he got off the bus at Penrith Stadium. It's absolutely an outrage. Can I just look at your vulnerable moment or yes. your point? Yes. Were you sort of standing somewhere and suddenly you felt this, dare I say, urination coming on your head <laughs> from a high above yes. from Nathan Cleary? And it was a Penguin Stadium and it was Nathan Cleary. So forget about that he's not going to piss on your back until he's raining. It's like a thunderstorm <laughs> yes. and that's why I want the storms to win. <laughs> Very interesting week next week, Chris. Um, I, look, if I was a betting man, I would put my money on the storm. But, I, you know, as a person who doesn't bet, I always go with the heart. The heart always loses, correct? Right. Yeah. <laughs> David, who's your tip? Look, I think it's easy to underestimate Penrith. I, I was yeah. highly impressed with their defence last week. I think they're very tough in the middle. Yeah. Um, my concern is, as we've talked about, the speed out wide of the Storm, which I think yeah. has been understated yeah. by most people. I was at the game between the Storm and Souths, yeah. which Souths really were the better side, and but who'd... they got absolutely burned by Pappenhausen and Addo Carr down the left. And that's yeah. it was frightening because I was quite near the fence um, watching these guys fly down the wing, and they are lightning. Oh, yeah. yeah. And when I was in Canberra watching Melbourne, I was frightened too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was on television. Um, who would you like to see sent off for, on both sides? By the way, you didn't give us a tip. <laughs> no, I didn't give you a tip, but I'll tip I'll tip Penrith. Penrith. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I feel good now. Yeah. Uh, who would you like to see sent off? I don't want anyone sent off. Oh, That's a terrible on. question. <laughs> I, I know who I want sent off. Who? Cameron Munster, so he could play hit the road jacket yeah, and just someone, give it to the store. I want the block of cheese set off. Yeah, yeah. Brandon Smith for over, <laughs> overzealous work. Uh, and, of course, I think the forgotten character in all of this, and, and it's probably the right time to pay tribute, uh, mm. uh, well, it's Amy Shark, obviously, because... You know, <laughs> she, she's the entertainment. Well, she's on her own. <laughs> she's on her own. I mean, what are the, the other code's got a oh, circus, hasn't it? The, the AFL Splendor is... Splendour in the grass. The, the AFL <laughs> is doing Splendour in the grass. They've, yeah. got, they've got Shepherd. Yes. Hey, Geronimo. Uh, they've got DMAs. Yes. Nothing hotter right now. Is Andrew Stockdale playing with them or on his own? What's he do? I, I don't know. No. I don't. That worries me because it brings back memories because a lot of people draw the um, the likening between the, the likes of Stockdale and Zeppelin and yeah. Guns N' Roses, whatever. I'd hate to see, remember the year that Slash came out on his own? Yes. And it was just him and a guitar with no band? Yeah, no, I'd hate not, to see Stockdale right, out there a cappella. And can I just say, it's so not AFL. It's, you know, what are they doing, Cub, really? Is it Cubs sport yeah. that they're playing? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if Danny Minogue was performing, you know. No. But Andrew Stockdale? Yeah. DMAs? No. But this is the thing with AFL, they've got less time in the yeah. game this year. That They're not confident they're in the They're stopping product. for a horse race, right? The, yeah, the, the Cox Plate. It's, Cox Plate. It's, it's, it's Everybody shut up. They're Put importing turf. The whole thing's a disaster. But no, the forgotten person in all this is, of course, Peter Valenis. Yes. And he hasn't received enough attention and respect. Yes. And I'm not going to start here. But I will point out that he gave a very, very uh, heartfelt interview this week that I have so felt that we saw the human side. He said, I've coped with the stress except in one way. I haven't been sleeping. You got any suggestions? Because um, I know I'm a pyjamas and doona sort of guy. Well, okay, well, yeah. Valenis has confessed that he's actually taken sleeping pills. That probably would help. <laughs> and that he sleeps under a doona. Ah, yeah, where I, I mean, I I can't do the doona. I, I don't sleep high. anyway, so who am I to? Yeah, <laughs> Dave, you're a doona guy. Very much a doona man. Yeah. I don't like being weighed down by heavy blankets. It doesn't too. doesn't suit me at all. No. And he'd like to be able to thrash around a bit. You Move can't do it when you're tucked. Yeah. Right. No, tucked tuck, tuck, bad. You just, yeah. you just untuck. <laughs> yeah. But the, 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 the trouble with the doona, I find, is it's, it's like it's a bit like Brandon Smith. It's a block of temperature. Yeah. Right. Whereas <laughs> you can be more analog. <laughs> with the, the sheets and the blankets. But Chris, it's, also, it's also tougher to make the bed in the morning, Chris, right? Duna simple, right? There's a big Pillows, story. boom, Duna gone, right? Gone. Yeah. Big story this week. It says that maybe PBL hasn't been given enough credit for what he's done. And they want to just backpedal a bit. They go back to Maguire found an unlucky. This is, you know, Eddie Maguire, you know, because he was just saying that there's I think no. Got Madge. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, he said the AFL wants to show social leadership. They don't want to be out like the NRL, spruiking different ideas. We're going to be model citizens. How well's that gone? What? <laughs> That's Eddie Maguire back in the day, right? And then it comes in, yeah, Peter Fitzsimons, hello. I oh, know this is predictable, right? Is there an industry more at risk of spreading COVID-19 than the NRL? Now, we're at the last game. Peter, Eddie, stand up and be counted now. Where where are the bouquets, Stephen? Where yes, are the bouquets? Well, wouldn't that be nice at the end if the flowers were delivered to Peter, not just the captain? By the way, one of the things I promise the listeners to do is give them credit when they participate on the Facebook page. And we put up a picture of Ivan, who we were just talking about previously. The lovable. The, Ivan the Terrace. And it'd be um, <laughs> wrong of me not to uh, read out some of the feedback about how people feel about Ivan. Um, Nick Howell, who has a tenuous connection to the show, said, how many premierships will we win? 
Brendan Clay said, should have stayed at West. Well, I disagree with that, Brendan. Uh, Dan Collard said, dance monkey, dance monkey, dance monkey. <laughs> Leon Smith says, if you let the ball bounce, you're inviting disappointment into your life. Gus Gould. Um, uh, Graham, uh, George O'Grady, when you miss your bus. That's what he feels like when he sees Iden, uh, Ivan. Gavin Brody said, how are we in this position losing Trent is going to hurt us because yeah. T-Baz, the offensive coordinator, is going... Terry Ball says when he sees Ivan, you get a kiss, you get a kiss, everybody gets a, a kiss. kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Greg Cross, who's been on this show, the fickle fingers of fate that is Ivan Cleary. James Payton says, come on, T-Baz, it's blinding lights, get into it. <laughs> Reference to the son yeah. Nathan's TikTok. Yes, yes. Brian Straybooks just goes, everybody hurts. There's a lot of crying okay. theme here. So if you can make a prediction on some of these uh, suggestions, what would happen at the, okay, there's no gutho. Yep. Do you think we'll get a re- re- recreation of the TikTok dance? I feel... Father that, and son? Yeah. I feel that if Penrith score mm-hmm. in the shadows of full time to seal the premiership... Yes. If the DJ Doesn't hits... play the weekend. If the DJ hits blinding lights by the weekend, yeah. the boys will follow. <laughs> Go nuts. <laughs> uh, Sean Tom said, pizza dude over here, bra And Adam, and I always have trouble with Adam's name, Noren Bergen, if I'm doing that correct, he says, I can't... I'm too busy recovering from the McDonald's added on Channel 9. <laughs> Peter Melanis, by the way, mm-hmm. I saw him on the way out from the Penrith South game catching the lift down. Yep. And you've got to say, the man's a pioneer. He was in a packed lift. Yes. Didn't have time to take yeah. a photo. Yeah. yeah. Unmasked, yeah. thumbing his nose at the COVID recommendations out of ANZ. He knows Doesn't more than care. you do, Chris. He's got his finger in How can anybody run the most expensive horse race in the world and run the greatest rugby league comp- or foot- sporting competition in the world in one week? I ask you. Peter can. Peter can. You're talking about rugby league and conflict of interest. <laughs> I think you, you may need a special program for that. <laughs> well, we, 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 we need a federal ICAC to obviously deal with Volantis and, of course, Mal Meninga, who's mm. been stood down from Australian coaching duties in order to coach Queensland. Mm. Uh, final thoughts are we to that point, Stephen? Well, yeah, and look, I have to tell you this, Chris. There will be some very special entertainment on the Rugby League Grand Final, I cannot tell you about Is that right? You didn't hear it from me first. Can I break? No, I can't break that story. <laughs> uh, we'll be on Fire Up this Friday with our Grand Final special. David, what will you be doing on the day? On the day? It's going to be a later start this time, isn't there? Because there's yes. less on yes. early, fewer games. The NRLW Grand Final is at four and the uh, the men's game is at 7.30. All right. Well, I have, a, I have a very good friend whose son will be playing in a a semi-final early in the day. I'm not quite sure if I can get to that. This is not at ANZ, obviously. Um, but if so, that's what I'll be doing. And then I'll be heading out there, I think, around 2, 2.30. Right. Taking it in from there. Hopefully we'll catch up. Yeah, indeed. Okay. S- Stephen, are you doing something at the Grand Final? Yeah, I'll be playing the music. Oh, okay. Yeah, the surrounding music. Again, you're not taking requests, though, are you? Of course I am, Chris. Of can, course I am. Um, can we uh, request then that you play Britney Spears, Oops, I Did It Again, Oops. when Cameron Mustin gets... When uh, from the bin. Another brain, a brain fart. Can I... Can I uh, <laughs> my parting shot is a quote uh, supplied by uh, a number of people, including our mate Newman, um, mm. formerly of the Shark cast. <laughs> Adam Pearce from the Tumut Blues had this to say about what was going to happen next year in his rugby league career. Adam said, I'm not a definite for next season. I'm still enjoying it but I am 100% 50-50 at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> Rugby league. Yeah. Farewell, everybody, and uh, we'll see you after the big dance. Thank you, David. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> because I'm all fired up, I'm all fired up and lonesome. I got a chip on my shoulder, and I'm acting just a little too tough.